Hi, this is John Kalopoulos from our Amateur Surgery Center here in Athens, Greece. Laser Vision, very pleased to present to you this combined case of a phacotoric IL and a glaucoma valve tube. This is a young lady, 48-year-old female, that has uh, quite significant cataracts, but more importantly, has very advanced glaucoma. Gonioscopy confirms this is open-angle glaucoma. Pressure is 28 millimeters of mercury intractable, despite the full medical treatment on all four topical agents. You can see the advanced company in both eyes. We're going to work on the left eye. Today, uh, we can see that there's almost a 90% cupping. Our standard pre-cataract evaluations with the wide field fantoscopy with the fantastic Octos uh, device. Uh, macula OCT here on the right eye showing a mild retinal membrane, almost complete PVD on the macular region and the very advanced cupping on the left eye. You can see how deep the cup is here and how the left as well has an retinal membrane. Uh, the toll on the epithelium of the Avanti OptiView total cornea and epithelial th thickness maps from the topical glaucoma medications, very important in the visual function of the patient. And again, the retinal membrane here on the left eye, all things to be discussed and taken into account post-cataract because we've seen increased CME in patients who had a retinal membrane and are weaning off uh, steroids. The panic map seen here to calculate the total cornea power centrally and uh, interferometry here with the lens star and the TopCon device. Uh, that also provides us uh, with uh, topography maps, but this is anterior topography, so we use the total cornea power from the Pentacam, uh, and uh, these are the uh, uh, touristity measurements. We're going to go to our IOL calculator, and since the anterior chamber depth is at uh, 347, this is a very high mild patient. You can see the actual length is over 26. We're going to go with the Hoffer Q uh, formula on the left eye, with goal of minus one myopia. This is the Alcon uh, Acrosoft uh, spheric torque calculator that also takes into account my incision, which is invariably at the 10 o'clock position. Uh, all the preoperative data, and you can see the extensive uh, uh, keratometry is on the top, IO calculation. We're in action. We uh, mark on the slant prior to going to the OR, and this is done under pre-bulb anesthesia, the six o'clock position. Always a reminder, we're gonna use a T3 uh, at 99 degrees, we're going to use our uh, axis here marker by a sequel uh, at uh, 99 degrees, mark with uh, surgical ink and uh, go and use that 6 o'clock mark which now for surgical view is at 12 o'clock and uh, mark the uh, axis of the Torque lens, our cornea incision, a uh, manual curvilinear continuous capsule rexus. As you can see here, another pupil is dilated. There's no pseudo exfoliation. This patient, very common uh, for younger glaucoma patients to have pseudo exfoliation in Greece. Of course, as we all know, there's always significant asymmetry in pseudo exfoliation, usually one eye affected, uh, if not just that. Uh, the cataract uh, on a younger patient, as we can see here, is relatively on the soft side. So we will split into the nucleus and just absorb uh, each uh, hemimeridian of the lens. Uh, we use the uh, White Star signature device for our FACO. It is my go-to device for the last uh, three years. Here is the Acrosoft Torque lens. You can see the power is just 12 and a half with one and a half uh, diaper astigmatism also uh, underlining how uh, highly myopic the patient is. And we feel that even a glaucoma patient deserves to have a toric lens if needed. We use the whole spectrum T2 to T9. It's wider in Europe. Uh, and 65 of our cataract surgery patients receive a toric IOL. I think this is a world record. We're using our 80 vicral suture here as a uh, traction suture to expose. This is the left eye, so I want to expose the temporal a part of the conge going with my Westcott scissors. And uh, I'm running through this because I think for a glaucoma valve, it's very important. And I owe this to my mentors, Peter Netland and um, uh, Ben uh, Dreyer at the Mass Iron Infirmary Harvard Medical School, uh, where I did my glaucoma fellowship following my cornea fellowship at Cornell with uh, Donafeld and Perry. So uh, this is an important part because um, I was taught, and I'm a strong believer, you need to expose one quadrant of the conjunctiva because 
the area that we're going to shoot you down the conjunctiva needs to be far away from the uh, valve. I see a lot of colleagues exposing minimal conjunctiva, and then the conjunctival incisions fall uh, very close into the uh, valve uh, work. Uh, I'm going to use two minutes of mitomycin C0.2%. Uh, Here we're attaining very good uh, hemostasis with the bipolar uh, cautery, another very important part. We can see the uh, superior uh, rectus muscle, uh, and that's an area to avoid. It's very rich in vessels. Here's our, our mitomycin C-soaked sponge that goes deep into the area that has been uh, spread open with the uh, mosquito clamps. And here we're uh, priming the amid uh, glaucoma valve. Very pleased to have met and uh, worked together with uh, Dr. Ahmed, who has uh, designed and uh, pioneered this valve. Uh, we're rinsing after two minutes of mitomycin C very thoroughly with uh, BSS. The valve going in, we're going to measure in our calibers 9 millimeters. We don't want to be too close to the limbus. We don't want to be over 11 millimeters because the valve may, uh, the backside of the valve may touch the optic nerve. Of course, this is a myopic patient, a longer eye. This would be very unlikely. So if I get a very good 9-0 nylon suture, which is the case here, I have good exposure. I'm going well uh, into the sclera. Very careful here in a mile. We know the sclera is thin. It's an area of concern we may perforate uh, here. And again, we're nine millimeters away from the limbus, so this would be disastrous for the eye. So this is probably one of the most critical parts. I'm going in with methylcellulose to bloat the anterior chamber. Now with the 23 gauge butterfly needle, I'm guiding flush to the iris. Again, this is a young patient. I want to be as far away from the cornea as possible. I do not want to embed my tube into the iris because this will obstruct the tube. So thus I uh, cut the uh, tube with my Westcott scissors to be beveled. Uh, and uh, here I'm going to trim it a little bit more as I'm measuring. See the Westcott's uh, going in very sideways, almost parallel to the tube to create a very beveled edge on the uh, glaucoma tube. These may uh, seem... Uh, as very simple uh, details, very important though, uh, as every piece of this puzzle makes uh, a uh, glaucoma valve uh, work. I've done extensive work uh, along with uh, Klaus Domas' team when I was at Mass Sainier and uh, doing the valve component in the keratoprosis patients. And this was the uh, trigger for me to uh, roll over the uh, cornea service as well at the Mass Sainier and work closely with uh, Klaus Doman as well. So very privileged to have worked with all these giants of ophthalmology. Again, here I'm using my nylon, nylon suture <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, uh, tilt and change the course of the tube. I want my tube to be going in more horizontally than vertically. And uh, the importance here is not to tighten the uh, uh, nylon, nylon suture very much so to obstru obstruct the tube opening. I'm uh, using my corneal scleral patch here. Uh, I'm suturing with 10 on nylon sutures, uh, four sutures to secure the patch over the tube and thus uh, avoid eroding conjunctiva over the tube as it conjunctiva rubs with the upper eyelid and these uh, tired eyes from the chronic uh, glaucoma medications. Closing the conj with adovicro, I'm flushing it here chamber. You can see the tube is just... Uh, at par with the semi-dilated pupil opening, thus not to uh, create visual problems. You can see this uh, a month later, our pressures are uh, 12, and invariably at one month, tubes uh, go up to 20 to 24, and they do require medication as well. The final IOP is, uh, as we know, a factor of the uh, surface of the uh, valve and not actually the type of the valve. Here we're three months later, pressures are 12, with uh, Ganford at night. Uh, a very nice case. Patient is, by the way, uh, 2020 at intermediate, uh, 2040 at distance with minus one myopia. This is John Canalpa signing off. Thanks so much for your attention.